Monday through Friday. Awesome. We're grateful you're taking 10 minutes to catch up on current events with us. My name is Carl Azus. Let's go. About 100 miles of seawater separate mainland China from the island of Taiwan. These two places have a complicated and sometimes contentious relationship, and Taiwan's defense minister says the military tensions between them now are the worst he's seen in 40 years. Last week, China flew 150 warplanes into Taiwan's airspace. They included fighter jets and bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Taiwan says it hasn't done anything since then to provoke an attack from China, but that the island is making military preparations in case conflict breaks out. Why is all this happening? Taiwan is an ally of the United States. Last year, under the Trump administration, the U.S. approved $1.8 billion in weapons sales to Taiwan. This year, under the Biden administration, the U.S. approved $750 million in weapons sales to Taiwan. Supporters say this sends a message that America stands with Taiwan and against any move China may make to invade the island. But even though China has never governed Taiwan, it sees the island as the territory of mainland China. And China's communist government blames America for, quote, collusion with Taiwan and for increasing tensions in the Taiwan Strait by sailing U.S. warships there. For its part, the American government says it has strongly urged China to stop its military, political, and economic pressure of Taiwan. U.S. officials say their commitment to the island is, quote, rock solid. So you can see how when tensions rise in the Taiwan Strait, they stretch across the Pacific. And it's the same politics that separated China from Taiwan in the first place that still keep them apart. This island of 23 million people is a vibrant democracy that sits just across the sea from the world's largest one-party state. I'm Matt Rivers in Taiwan, officially known as the Republic of China. And I'm Stephen Jiang in Beijing, the capital of what's officially known as the People's Republic of China. This name has existed since 1949, when the communists won a brutal civil war and forced the previous government to flee to Taiwan. Both sides set up their own governments, each claiming to be the only legitimate ruler of the entire Chinese territory, and decades of hostility ensued. There was no travel, trade, or communications between both sides, and the threat of military action was a constant presence. But tensions began to ease in the 1990s when Beijing and Taipei authorities began a series of meetings and correspondence that deliberately put aside the issue of sovereignty in favor of resolving practical matters. These dialogues paved the way for economic and cultural cooperation. Businesses from Taiwan have invested billions of dollars here on the mainland, the world's most populous country and second largest economy and millions of mainland tourists have flocked to Taiwan after direct flights resumed. But still, China insists Taiwan is a breakaway province that must be reunited with the mainland by force if necessary. With analysts seeing increased Chinese military drills near Taiwan, many people here are wary of the growing strength and ambitions of their massive neighbor just across the sea, fearful that their unique way of life, cultivated over the last seven decades, may be under rising threat. Ten second trivia. Which of these islands is located off the south coast of England? Isle of Man, Isle of Wight, Aran Islands, or Orkney Islands? In the English Channel, just off the coast of southern England is where you'll find the Isle of Wight. And one way of getting there is by a mode of transportation that's extinct everywhere else. This is a hovercraft. Maybe you knew that. But the hovercraft service that operates on the Isle of Wight is the only one of its kind that runs all year. It's been doing that since 1965 when there was no hover port. Pilots just picked a spot on the beach where there weren't too many people around. Today, it's a bit more organized and a lot more nostalgic. Gliding seamlessly across land and water on top of a cushion of air, hovercraft are versatile machines unlike any other. Part ship and part airplane, they were once heralded as the future of travel, but today they've almost disappeared. The hovercraft is unique to the island, and I think if I speak for all of the pilots of the ground crew and engineering teams we have here, it makes us quite proud actually to be involved with such a unique form of transport. 
We are the world's only all year round commercial passenger hovercraft service. Connecting South Sea and the Isle of Wight off England's south coast in less than 10 minutes, these hovercraft carry nearly a million passengers each year. In the winter months, it's mainly people travelling to and from work, but come the summer is when we are a tourist attraction in our own right. The bit that makes the hovercraft work is the skirt. The skirt will lift the hovercraft to around a metre and a half off of the surface. The craft is very manoeuvrable. It's a very hands-on machine to fly. It's rather like driving a Land Rover on ice. British inventor Sir Christopher Cockrell came up with the hovercraft in the 1950s, even using one to cross the English Channel to France in 1959. They soon caught on, and by 1968, huge Mountbatten-class hovercraft like these were routinely taking passengers and their cars across the channel in about 30 minutes. They were expecting that one day it would replace ocean liners. Well, quite clearly that wasn't going to come true. I wouldn't like to call it a graveyard. I'd like to call it a living museum. We have 65 large models, 250 smaller models, all scattered throughout on open display. After being retired in 2000, what remained of the cross-channel giants came to rest here at the Hovercraft Museum. Really, the golden age of the Hovercraft was the 80s. This is when a lot of people were taking the cross-channel trip just as an experience. Not quite as first class as Concorde, but uh, definitely an experience. The biggest passenger hovercraft in the world. Now you can really see the size of the thing. You pay an extra five pounds for the privilege into what is called premier class. There were half a dozen reasons on the demise of the large craft. They were very expensive to run. The Channel Tunnel was a very heavy influence the loss of duty-free revenue, really the final nail in the coffin. People look at the hovercraft as not working as a passenger entity, but we've been operating for over 50 years. And those operations have virtually been unbroken in all that time. You've really got to be able to do something with a hovercraft that you couldn't do with a normal vessel. The hovercraft is here because when the tide goes out, there is at least half a mile of sand to travel over before we reach the water. Now we can avoid the need to travel down the pier to get on the conventional vessel. Hovercraft complete the journey here in less than half of the time of the speediest catamaran ferries, making it the fastest link to the mainland and not just for commuters and holiday makers. On the island here we're reliant on helicopters to transfer critically ill patients to mainland hospitals. And during COVID, we were able to convey patients quicker than the helicopters were doing it. The pandemic has been a great moment of pride, really, for us to support the community. The future I don't see is dead for hovercraft. They do have a use. Farmers put up scarecrows to keep birds out of their crops. Homeowners in Wisconsin put up this to keep speeders out of their neighborhood. They named it Frank, and they say he's necessary because reckless drivers keep flying down a nearby hill, sometimes wrecking and damaging property. Hard to say how effective the mannequin has been, but local officials say more speed bumps could be installed down the road, so Frank may only be a temporary worker. But let's be frank, if you're trying to tank some speedy or some CD drivers with that break in the bank, why not build a scare speeder with a scarecrow plan? Because if Frank can't do it, man that can. Let's not be coy, it's a decoy that's designed to perfect the art of taking a stand man and to serve and protect against the reckless or the feckless who might let off the throttle if they think they see a cop and stop or what's a model. Halt! No, Holt is in Holt High School. Shout out to our viewers watching from Holt, Michigan. And thank you for subscribing and leaving a comment on our YouTube channel, which is the only place we look for shout out schools. I'm Carl Azu.